Hello, good evening. Welcome to another Wednesday evening. Can we share in a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the opportunity once again to receive at your feet. We ask that, Father, even as we have this session tonight, you would speak to us, you would lead this service. That, Father, you minister to each one of us individually. We thank you that, Lord, you have heard us and you have answered us. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, once again, welcome to this evening's Anabiosi session. So for this month, the month of June, the past few weeks, we've had very interesting and wonderful sessions and on the theme, Love in Action. This evening also promises to be a very wonderful session. So we have a speaker, Reverend Emilia Wedi Dankwa, speaking to us on the theme, See and Hear Love in Action. Now, Reverend Emilia Bwedi Dankwa has been in ministry for over 30 years now. Together with her husband, we have a couple's ministry like Aquila and Priscilla. They started as evangelists, then pastors, and are now into missions. She's a wife and a mother of four biological children, a spiritual mother, a mentor to many, and a grandmother. She has an international teaching and preaching ministry. She's a professional and pastoral counselor. Reverend Mrs. Emilia Bwedi Dakwa is the author of a number of books. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let's invite Reverend Mrs. Emilia Bwedi Dakwa to take us through the teaching for tonight. Thanks be to God who has caused us to triumph in Christ Jesus. We thank God that it is purely by his mercies that we are not consumed. His steadfast love never ceases. It is renewed every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Thank God for his grace which is sufficient and his strength which is made perfect in our weakness. Shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that the entrance of your word brings light. We pray that as your word comes forth, may it come with power. May, it, may you back it with authority. May the dew of heaven fall upon every word that is spoken. And Father, we pray that you help us to be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving ourselves. Your word is life and spirit. Therefore, Lord, quicken us by your spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We want to thank God for his grace, his mercy, and the peace of God that transcends all human understanding. I want to thank God for all the Reverend Ministers, the Presbytery, and all the beloved in the Lord. We thank God for the thing which he has given to us, love in action. Now you open our Bibles to John 13, 34 and 35. John 13, 34 and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. I repeat it. John 13, 34, and 35. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Thanks be to God for his word. God has given us a command. It is not to be negotiated with, but the word of God says emphatically that he has given us a command. And that command is that we love one another because he has also loved us. And another one also follows. That is a mark of discipleship. So in this verse, we can know two things. One, a command to obey. And two, a mark of discipleship. God's love is self-starting. He is love and the source of love. We love him because he first loved us. 
God is the initiator of love. Hallelujah. God's love is his deliberate active sacrifice of his son for our redemption. Therefore, to be loved by God means two things. And one, to be loved by God means he has set his sight on us and is actively wooing us towards himself at all times. I repeat, he has set his sight on us and is actively wooing us towards himself at all times. Two, he has also made us a source, a channel, an instrument of love to our brethren, to people without hope, to the outcasts of society, and to the world at large. Now, for us to be able to love in action, then it behoves us as children of God to know the nature of this love. By knowing the nature of this love, it will also give us insight, understanding, illumination, and help us to be able to ask for grace to be doers of this important command. What is the nature of God's love? It is indestructible, and this can be seen in Romans 8, 37 to 39. God's love can never be broken. God's love can never be destroyed. And so his love is indestructible. The word of God says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Therefore, no matter what you pass through, past, present, or future, no matter what surrounds you, God's love towards you is indestructible. Even he has made provision for our future sins. That is not to uh, help us to sin, but that to know that even when we sin, there is propitiation for our sins. And secondly, the second nature of God's love, it is undeserved. Beloved, we don't deserve it. We did not pay for it. We did not do anything to merit it but by his mercy for Romans 3 23 says for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God none of us deserve it but by his grace so another nature is that his, li his love is undeserved then the third one means it also says his love is compassionate God's love, one of the nature of God's love is that, the characteristics of God's love is that it is compassionate. As written in Isaiah 49, 15, can a woman forget his nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. All those listening to me as mothers, sometimes you want to be there for our children. Or for one or two reasons, you realize you cannot even do it. Some too, we ignore our responsibilities. But thanks be to God. God's love is always compassionate. In fact, when we talk about compassion, compassion is love in action. Therefore, God's love is very compassionate. When you read the scriptures throughout, as and when Jesus performed any miracle, it was, uh, he was moved by compassion. Especially Luke 5, the man uh, at the uh, pool of Bethesda. The word of God says, when he saw, when Jesus saw that he had been in that uh, situation for long, he had compassion for that person. God's love is compassionate. It's also constant. It is very constant. According to Jeremiah 31 verse 3. Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. 
Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. His love is very constant. There are no inconsistencies in God's love. And the same John 37, when he began uh, teaching, he said, Having loved his own, he loved them even unto the end. There are no diminishing returns in love. The very love he had for us, the way he initiated that, it goes through and it does not reduce in its strength. It does not reduce in its power. God's love is constant. And another nature is that it is immeasurable. It is immeasurable. Ephesians 3, 18 and 19. That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know of Christ, to know the love of Christ, we pass this knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Beloved, we can never measure his love. The depth, the height, and the width. As much as we try, we will not. Thanks be to God for such attributes of his love, of his love towards man. His love is also voluntary. Voluntary because God chose to love us from his own will. He was never coerced. He was never, we didn't even do anything to merit it. And more so, nobody forced him. But out of his own voluntary will, Christ died for us and shared his love for us. As written in Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love towards us. In that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That is the nature of his love. And also, it is a gift. It is a gift. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. When you read throughout the scriptures, even in the Old Testament, when Christ had not been revealed, you see the love of God in different dimensions and in all spheres of life. Throughout the scriptures, we are assured of God's love. We are reminded that the proof of God's boundless love is that Christ died for us. The proof of his love is that the full knowledge, in fact, Jesus is the wisdom and the knowledge of Christ, uh, of God. And God had to release, had to send his son to come and take the form of a servant. And he also learned to be there through the things he suffered and he loved us in spite of ourselves. And this is something we should note very carefully. That love is not simply, it's not simply meant to make us feel good. It is rather to motivate us to respond in ways that make us emulate, imitate his goodness. Love sometimes demands that we act in a very practical way and even uncomfortable ways. It's not uh, something that lets us feel good, that brings a comfort. But sometimes, even on the contrary, we must love in spite of the situation, in spite of ourselves, and no matter what the circumstance is. Love is also very practical. And how do we see uh, the practicality of God's love? Love, God's love is not optional. We are commanded to love one another. It's a command to obey. God has said in the word of God says, he who obeys a command is rewarded. But those who ignore, overlook, and are disobedient, they are punished by the Lord. I pray that as we listen to God's word, we will also take assessment of our Christian life. And even when we talk about ministry, Ministry is service to God and service to man. That is ministry. So love is not optional. We don't decide to do it and decide not to do it, but it's a command to obey. 1 John 3, 11, 23 says, For this is the message that we have from the beginning, that we should love one another. And this is commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. 
It's a commandment he has given. It's not an option. It's not debatable. And neither is it negotiable. God's love is also demonstrative. It is expressed in various ways. 1 John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Now, for us to tell the world, to tell our family members, our church members, those in our workplaces, that we love God is that uh, we are ready to demonstrate it in whatever form the demand may be. And that is to let all know that we are his disciples. A mark of discipleship, a mark or a sign of maturity, and a sign or demonstration that we know him and we are born of him. Love is also active, very active. It is not an option. It is demonstrative. It is also very active. Fair John 3, 7. But whoever have this world's goods and see his brother in need and shut up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Seeing or knowing someone who is in need and it's within your means to help. If you do not, it's a sign you don't know God. It's a sign your love is very lifeless. It's inactive. But God wants us. And one thing I like even about God's word is that it is scripture that is used to interpret scripture. And even when you are weak in this aspect of love, the word of God says, the spirit that raised that Jesus in you dwells in you. And the same spirit who lives in you will quicken your mortal body. And that mortal body, the explanation is that mortal, that which is bound to die. So that which is bound to die, as and when we come to ourselves, as and when we hear God's word about love, the same spirit will quicken us and spare us on to cause our love to be very active. So I send God's word to you wherever you are and it to myself. That the Spirit of God will quicken us up. In case we are tired of doing good, in case we are tired for one or two reasons, may we rise up to our God-given potential and cause the love of God in us to be very active. Hallelujah. Love is also responsive. First John 4, 19. We love him because he first loved us. Why are we able to love God? Because having loved us, he also prepares us to meet him on that level. So he, we, we love him because he first loved us. His love is self-initiating, that's as I said. But we must also respond to his own glory. Hallelujah. Then having known the nature of God's love and practical love, what it is, then we come to the love in action. Love in action really means Loving others or love for others, expressing and showing ways and means of letting the world know, ways and means of uh, proving yourself as a child of God, making a mark in your Christian life, leaving indelible mark, causing impact, positive influence. In fact, uh, contributing to your quota in this world, that is significance. Telling all you are relevant is to find ways and means, not only theoretically telling people you love them, but finding ways and means within your own small way. You can never compare yourself with anybody, but in your own small way, how you can also demonstrate your love towards others. How do we do this? Ephesians 5, 1 and 2. The word of God says, Therefore, be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also has loved us, and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Here we are being admonished to imitate God in everything. And children learn by imitation. All teachers know that. And God has given us a parting through his son, Jesus Christ, through the spirit of God, through the ministerial gift, through the motivational, inspirational gift, 
all go together to demonstrate God's love. And he wants us to imitate him. One thing about God is that he will not ask you to do in anything he knows you are not capable of. Having asked us to imitate him means inside of us, in our make, in our creation, all the resources needed. Has he not said in his word, he has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. We have been endowed. There are some, some potential, some values. We are wired in such a way that that which he commands, when you go to him in humility and obedience and ask for grace, he will give us the grace to do it. Therefore, we must be imitators. And we must also be compelled. 2 Corinthians 5, 14a, I remember so many years I think in 1994, I had, I was a guest preacher for uh, Assemblies of God Women Fellowship, and they gave us this topic. And as and when I prepared, I could see and really feel the driving force in God's love. It says, we must be compelled, for the love of Christ compels us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we all we all are dead. Then were we all dead. Second Corinthians 5, 14 day. To be compelled means to be constrained. It's a driving force. The love of God compels us. It motivates us. The love of God drives us, causes us, prepares us, and rather pushes us to do the incredible for the, for the name of the Lord to be magnified. And the word that, to love others too means to comfort others. To comfort others. Have you ever thought? In fact, all that we pass through, we agree with Paul that it is for the propagation of the gospel. We are shaped for ministry. The earth stands for our spiritual gifts. The H stands for our heart. The A, our abilities. The P, our personality. The E, our experience. Nothing about us goes waste. Whatever you find yourself through, whether negative or positive, God in his own wisdom has a way of shaping you up into a ministry. So all the things that bring you tears, for all you know, after you have been comforted by God, God expects you to comfort others. Now a lot of people are running Helter skelter, even in church, we have put up a front, but a lot of us are bleeding on the inside. To love and actually to go close, to feel for them, ask them of their need. And it's not that you are tempering with their privacy, but as a sign that you want to practice love. For when you read scripture, 2 Corinthians 1, 3 to 4, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able, hallelujah, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any way troubled with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. That is the word of God unto us. Have you wept? Have you cried? Hannah prayed from the bitterness of her soul. All the things we have brought you tears. Others are also shedding tears in the same manner. Because you have been comforted, you must also comfort others. Jesus told Peter, Simon, Peter, the enemy had wanted to sift you like wheat, but have interceded for you that, that your faith may not fail. And after you have come out, you also strengthen others. Beloved, we are comforted to comfort. We are saved to save. We are delivered to also deliver. We are healed also to heal. Therefore, may we not lose cognizance of this, that we must bring comfort to others. All around us are people in need, and sometimes we have to set aside our own feelings and agendas to help them. In my own way, there are a lot of times I'm praying on issues that are causing me uh, to, to really be in pain. But as and when people come, 
Even when my prayers have not been answered, as I put mine aside and listen to them and pray with them, for all you know, any time their prayers are answered, by and large, I also see God meeting me, maybe in not that same trend, but in different ways. Our God is faithful. Therefore, let's make time. One way we can do that is to remember how God has comforted us in our trials and troubles so that we can receive those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves received from God. How easy to be engrossed in your own world, in your own challenges, concerns, at the expense of neglecting God's work, God's comfort for his people. Even this weekend, I ministered in the church, three-day uh, program, and after the program, I was really tired, but someone came to me with a baby with a challenge, and I had to really hold the baby and pray for her. I could, and I told the mama, I, 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 I told the mother, I can really feel how you are feeling because I've been through before. And I prayed and gave assurance and comfort to the, to the law, uh, to the lady that God cares. And she was very happy. And she left my present with a smile. That one is also love in action. And James 1.27 says, Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. The type of religion God desires, the type of religion the Father himself accepts, that he sees as faultless, is to make time, is to make time, is to look after orphans, widows in their distress. There is no telling what a simple act of kindness done in Jesus' name can do. Sometimes the best witness is kindness. Show and sow seeds of kindness. It's all too easy, whether in business, in church, or in family settings, in our own communities, to view others from the perspective of how they can benefit us. We shouldn't be manipulative Controlling, trying to use people to satisfy our own uh, desires. But rather, we must, uh, we must value them, place premium upon them, and make time. We value them for what we can get from them. We should not be. But rather, we must value them the way they are. We must focus on how we can help them. And it will go a long way to bring glory to God. Sometimes our main focus, our main hindrance, most people say, I, needed, I, I need money to do this and that. Sometimes it is not money. But as we go on, we will know. As much as money is a defense, and money is also needed. Your own self, your word of exhortation, a smile from you will go a long way to help others. That is love in action. And more so, the word of God says in Philippians 2, 3 to 4, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind. Let each, others, uh, each other esteem others better than himself. Let each esteem others better than himself. Let each one of us look out not only for our own interests, but also for the interests of others. I was having a marriage seminar and I told them, no selfish person can marry. Because marriage is not about yourself, what you will get, where you will reach. But finding ways and means to invest in your partner, to be who God wants him to be, and to prevent him from who he is not. It's not about us. Even joy, the acronym of joy, J-O-Y, it is Jesus, others, and yourself. But now... Uh, we, we, we are so much focused on self. There's so much selfishness in the system. But there is a clarion call. God is calling on us to come to ourselves, to know that for us to have this joy, Jesus must be first, others second, and we uh, third. But for all you know, as and when you do for others, God also meets you at your point of need. May God give us grace and help us to be doers of his word. May grace abound towards us 
May God open our eyes to see the poor and the needy in our mess and also help them. Sometimes they might not even be poor and needy, but when you get close, when you get close, and I can't say, we always say, and you're Some Someone might have enough money, but he might also have other needs, which we can help in a way. When you read Ephesians 2.10, the word of God says, we are the workmanship of Christ Jesus. We are the workmanship of God created in Christ Jesus. Workmanship is a masterpiece. It's craftsmanship. It's handiwork. And we have been prepared for good works. It says, for we are workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Beloved, we have been created unto good works. No good work can save us. By grace through faith are we saved, not of works, that any should boast. But when you are born again, after that your work, your good works is really needed for the advancement of the kingdom. And God has prepared good works for us. He has ordained them for us to work in them. Our prayer is to, uh, our, our responsibility is to be watchful unto prayer. Open our eyes to see, as and when. A door opens for us to walk in those good works. There are three major forms of good works. First, the good work of salvation. Christ has died for us. God gave Jesus for us. That is for us. It is done for us. We receive it by faith. The second one is the good work of sanctification. First Thessalonians 4.3. This is the will of God, even your sanctification. That one, it is work in us. That's why Paul admonished the people of Philippi. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. That which has been worked in you, allow it to be made manifest. And the third work of salvation, that is where love in action is very paramount. The work of service, that one, God does it through us. Our eyes become the eyes of God. Our mouth becomes the mouth of God. As I stand here to preach, this, this earthen vessel, God has equipped, anointed for me to speak his word. Therefore, all the parts of our bodies are taken on by the spirit of God. And as and when you do it, you do it as unto the Lord. For us to come to the fullness of Christ's maturity, to his own glory. Hallelujah. Therefore, love in action calls for good works. Let's identify them. It has already been ordained for us. Then we work in, uh, uh, through them. Open yourself. When you read God's uh, word, the second Timothy 2, from 20 to 22, it says, in a, in a large house, there are vessels, some to dishonor, some to dishonor. Some are made of clay, uh, silver, gold, clay, precious stones, wood, whatever. But if a man avails himself, he will be, a, he will be cleansed and equipped for every good work. He will be useful for the master. Therefore, you don't have to be uh, an, uh, 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 an elite of society. No, no matter your rank and file, there are good works. You can work in them to the glory of God. God, the same God who called Paul and anointed him to reach certain class of people. The same God also called Peter and also Peter also had his target. We all have our target groups we can reach out to. Hallelujah. That is what God has wanted to do. And he also commands us that we are the light of the world. You must rise up and shine that others will see our good works. In fact, our lives have been spared. We were created by God. And our lives have been spared to give glory to God. And that glory, sometimes what you do, what others look at you and become gives glory to God. We shall arise and let our, shine, our lights shine for men to know our good way and give glory to God. Knowing you and knowing what you are doing, people look at you and say, this one is of God. May his name be praised. Hallelujah. People want someone to understand their fears and desperations. They need to know they are not alone. People do want answers. But more than the answers, one, they want to know we hear and understand. Give listening ears to people. 
In fact, we have a counseling center. And when people come, uh, you don't even pray much because they are free to share. You allow them to share, come out. When they finish sharing, just a little prayer and the person becomes uh, relieved. But now, most of us do not make the time. Please, very soon he will succumb or come. And by Bible say we will give account of the way, of the way we led our lives. So let's make time for others. And the Lord will credit account in heaven. For all you know, the time you spend for people and help them. Those times are also added to your age. May his name be praised. Hallelujah. And love in action also cares for care. Care for others. Care. A lot of people have a lot of things. They are blessed. Physically, they are financially endowed, but no care. Money cannot do everything. Money is a defense zoo. It is important, though, but it's not the first. People need care. First Peter 5 7. The word of God says, Cast all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Because he cares for us, he also wants us to care for others. Job 10, 12 says, you have granted me life and favor, and your care has preserved my life. Beloved, care is a, is a uh, preservative. Care preserves. Care prevents decay. Sometimes even care takes away death, physical death. Let's show care. As members of God's family, we have a responsibility to help each other grow in faith. We are to add, we are, to, uh, we are told to encourage one another, spare others on for good works, to build each other up, build each other up. And this is what God wants us to do, to be patient. In fact, when we talk about patience, it has three dimensions. Be patient with yourself. Don't be irritable. Be patient with others. God has not finished with them. He has also not finished with them. And be patient with God. It's a matter of time. We pray that all these G3 apprehensions will leave us so that we will make time and seek God's faith. And by patience, we will yield the crop. And James admonishes us, let our patience finish its work and we will lack nothing. By being patient in all these three dimensions, you will make time to care, and your care will also yield you some results to the glory of God. Hallelujah. And love in action. Active love also serves. That's what I said earlier. When we talk about ministry, ministry is service. A service to God and service to, um, uh, to man. Galatians 5, 13 and 14 says, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. But through love, serve one another. Through love, we should serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Beloved, the whole of the law, the whole of the, both the New Testament and the Old, they are all embodied in this one. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our vertical love towards God is most demonstrated and expressed in our love towards one another. By love, let's serve in whatever capacity we find ourselves. Wives are to serve their husbands and vice versa. They are all ministry. When you serve at home, you are it's a ministry. When you serve in church, in your community, they are all forms of ministry. It's rather unfortunate. Our main focus is on the fivefold ministry as listed in Ephesians 4.11. But even with this fivefold ministry, they have to be helped for them to be able to do it better. Hallelujah. We must defend the vulnerable and the marginalized. In whatever capacity we find ourselves, we give them a chance. Let us give them a chance the vulnerable and the marginalized, a chance to realize their potentials. Let's show them real love, and in a small way, it will be significant to reflect the very heart of Jesus in their lives. All these street children, when you make time and hear them, 
and make time to listen to them are ourselves and those who are serving in our homes, the men, you realize that they have potentials. Uh, uh, by God's grace, we adopted a boy from Drobo, 14 years. And when he came, he did a lot of things. In fact, naturally, we would have sent him away. But any time we want to send him away, God will tell us no. If he goes, he will do this. In fact, he, he has a very bad record. But by God's grace, he will be seven years. No, he was seven years in October. By God's grace, we trained him through morning devotion, prayer, church attendance. He didn't go to school. He was a truant. Now he's learning a trade. And to the glory of God, he, he has some skills, especially when it comes to uh, electricals. And this technical, he has this technical know-how for a lot of things. By making time for him, he has seen his potential. Love in action means also sacrificing for others. We must sacrifice. In fact, God's ultimate sacrifice for us motivates us to sacrifice ourselves for others. Making time, laying down your life for others. It might not be so literal, dying for anybody, but figuratively, we can also make time for others. Love in action. This is what we are talking about. In humility, we must value others above ourselves. And with this, God will also give us grace. Even Jesus learned obedience through the things he suffered. He learned obedience. And when we talk about having the mind of Christ, it's having the mind of humility. And humility just means it has taken God and others to bring you where you are now. And so when you look at others too, you will want to help them. You also want to follow the way of love. The way of love. When you read 1 Corinthians 14.1, the word of God says, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. We pray that God will give us grace. And as we listen, you will ask for grace to be doers of the world. For you, it is appointed unto man once to die after that judgment. And you realize uh, it comes a time you must always assess yourself and ask, in what way am I contributing to my, go uh, to my world? In what way am I being relevant? Am I having positive influence in the lives of others? God's love stands when all else has fallen. May God give us grace to be lifted up of uh, the lives of people. Psalm 63 verse 3 says, Your unfailing love is better than life itself. How I praise you. God's faithfulness ascends to all generations, and he wants to use us as channels of blessing. The church is to be a place where all of us, no matter what struggles or brokenness we face, can know or experience God's love. May the hurting world experience the compassion of Christ from all who follow him. And I pray that we will never be exempted from this. Remember, you have also a role to play in the life of another person. May God grant us grace. May our lives both declare and exhibit this love that can change lives, purposes, and external destinies of others. God values everyone equally. There are no distinctions in his eyes. In reality, we are all in desperate need of Christ's love and forgiveness. His love compels us, constrains and drives us on the cross to do likewise, to imitate him. May we see each person through the eye of the blood. May we see each person in light of God's word and be ready for them. What a joy that on the day of accountability, you'll be able, someone will be able, your, your name will be written as a result of what you did for another person. Mm. May we see others as people created in the image and the likeness of God. The way we come into this world and the way we also depart is the same. It's the same all over. And I always tell people, when children are, are giving birth to, as and when they come from the wood, they are all the same. It's only the clothing and the things we use to wrap them, that brings about the difference. But the reality is the same. When we exit to, it's the same. 
That is to tell us that all other things, as important as they are, they should not run paramount in all our priorities. But that which is very paramount is the love of God expressed in various things. We will see each person as Jesus did, made in God's image, worthy of his love. Let us treat everyone we meet with Christ-like equality and learn to see beauty as he does it. And even we are commanded to love our enemies. Sometimes that becomes difficult. But grace abounds towards us. When you read 2 Corinthians 9, 8, it says, God, who is able to make all grace abound towards us, that having all sufficiency, we shall be equipped for every good work. Let's go to God and ask God for grace. And to end it all, Jesus told the woman, the immoral woman, leave her alone. She has done what she could. Therefore, all of us, without comparing ourselves to anybody, let's identify, discover our potentials, our talents, what we can do to give help. And in our own small way, let's help to activate the love of God. And God will surely be magnified. We should also love without borders, without restrictions. In the name of Jesus, John 15, 13 says, Greater love had no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. The most precious gifts are determined not by what went into them, but by whom they are from. The best gifts are valued not in money, but in love. Beloved, we have something money cannot buy. We have something education cannot give, though they are good. Let's go for it, and God's name will be magnified. Like Ruth. She didn't have anything to boast of. And following a woman, I always say if Naomi were to be in Ghana, they would have branded her a witch, that you have, called, you have killed your husband and two children. But thanks be to God, there was something in her which Ruth needed, and Ruth also there was something in her which Naomi also needed. And the end of it all, we all know how it ended, by Ruth having her name in the genealogy of Jesus. Therefore, may God be with us and help us. Gratefulness is the heart's response to God's undeserved love. Love is an activity, the essential activity of God himself. And when men love either him or their fellow men, they are doing, however imperfectly it is, God looks at the motive, what God does. And God is pleased when we act like him. We have seen the nature of God's love. We have seen how practical it is. And now God wants us on the basis of this knowledge to love others, to activate our love towards others. Because our love towards others is a representation, an expression of our love towards him. May the spirit of God quicken us. May the word of God, which is life and spirit, go a long way to open our eyes, to behold wonderful things out of this uh, teaching of love, and may we avail ourselves that on the day that we die, we will not die with that which the Lord has blessed us, but we will die empty because we emptied ourselves for our family members, our church members, our fellow workers, and the world at large. Do what you can and leave the rest in the hands of the Lord. Do it within the context of Scripture and within the, the driving force of love, and you will be rewarded. Because God's word says, he rewards those who obey his command. We've been commanded to love as Christ loved us. May the Lord bless us all. May he grant us grace. May he cause us to live again, love again, and to trust him again. May he lift our heads up. For the word of God says, he is our shield, our glory, and the lifter up of our hands. Shall we pray? Our Lord and our Master, we come to you. You have spoken to us, O God. And your word says, your word will never come back to you until it has accomplished the very purpose for which you sent it. Father, we pray that, Lord, you will cause us to know you. Open our eyes to know you. 
by knowing you as God of love, by knowing the primacy of love, the practicality of love, you're the nature of your love. We you know by your spirit, you will spare us on unto good works. Help us, O God, from today. Cause us to rise up, to arise and shine, for our light has already come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. Your word says, behold, the whole world lies in darkness. But Lord, we shall be a light unto them. And the light, O God, is your love. We pray that we will cause our light to shine before men, that they will see our good works and give glory to your uh, our Father who is in heaven. We have witnessed with our mouths, but Lord, it is about time that we also witness with our lifestyle, lifestyle evangelism that is based on love. I pray that the same love will be seen in our marriages, in our homes, in our family settings, and when you come, when the trumpet shall sound, we shall never be found wanting because the love in you will also ignite with us and we shall be raptured to your glory. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So thank you for staying with us. I trust that we've learned something. I pray that God's grace enables us to put what we have learned into practice. So next week, Wednesday, we have the last session on love in action. And we have feedback from project teams on their love in action projects. So kindly join us next week as we round up on the theme, love in action. Let's share in a word of prayer as we close. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for what we have learned from your word. We ask that, Father, your grace would have bound in our lives, that we put into practice these things that we have learned. Be with us in the rest of the days that are coming up and let your spirit lead us in everything that we do. We thank you, Father, that you have heard us, that you have answered us. In Jesus' name, amen. And now we take the benediction. The benediction. Unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you blameless before his Father, I commit each and every one of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift up the light of his countenance and walk you, even if it's through the valley of the shadow of death, and through the path of teenage and youthfulness and adulthood and even childhood, that he'll bring you to his throne and anoint you and give you his peace both now and always. Amen. <laughs>